Jordan Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you and we're here in Hawaii on Oahu actually and today we have a special episode for you guys it's all about aquaponics man. I'm excited for this episode actually to share with you guys this place here actually and this place is actually called the Aquaponics Place. This is a store that specializes in aquaponics, all the different parts you'll need for aquaponics, the plants, the fish, the different, you know, um, tubs, bins, totes, everything you need to do an aquaponics system in your home so that you can start growing your own food today. You know, especially here in the island, it's very important to, you know, have a backup plan in case the ship doesn't come in to be able to grow your own food. And as much as I like growing food in the soil and the dirt, you know, the, the red dirt here, um, you know, aquaponic systems are great because now instead of just having vegetables, you can also grow your own fish. Whether you want to keep fish as pets or whether you want to have them as a food source, they could grow a lot of fish and a lot of vegetables to eat a fairly well balanced diet. So anyways, what we're going to do today is we're going to go into the aquaponics place, share with you guys what exactly aquaponics is if you don't know about it, and share with you some of the components of the system, uh, share with you guys the fish that they offer here, and share with you guys some pre-made and pre-built systems you can actually buy and bring home anywhere here on Oahu. So we're here inside the aquaponics place, and if you guys are an aquaponics geek, this is your hangout, man. They got like all these different uh, valve things and siphon things and screens, and they got all kinds of fittings, and they got basically everything you need to do aquaponics at home. I mean, even on the mainland, a store like this is just unheard of. I've never seen an, a store dedicated to aquaponics. I think there should be a store like this in every city across the nation so that people can start actually growing their own food. And it makes it easy for people to get all the supplies and parts, fittings, all this stuff, you know, because normally you have to go around to like five stores, maybe a, a plumbing store, a hardware store, a swimming pool store, and a pond store to get all the different things to get a system together. I like that this is literally a one-stop shop to get all your aquaponics needs met. And I'm glad they're here on Oahu so that everybody on this island can be growing some food today. What we're gonna do next is actually share with you guys how the aquaponics system works specifically so that you'll be able to know how it works and then more importantly be able to set it one up and grow food for you and your family. So now we're gonna share with you guys what an aquaponics system is and it's pretty much right here. As you guys can see, we got a big tank on the bottom and this is simply a fish tank. It's holding fish. There's lots of fish growing in there. The tilapia that you can't eat or just keep as pets. And then uh, what happens is the fish are living in the fish tank and they're getting fed with the fish food, which is the only input in this system. The fish eat the fish food and then guess what? They create waste, much like us, right? The fish make the pee and the poop and then that basically uh, gets in the water and then what they do is they take the water and they pump it up into this top bed and in this top bed uh, they pump the water up and then the water filters through this uh, this uh, rock here the cinder and it basically filters down and then goes back in and then comes back out and sprays back into the tank there you can see a little work spraying out and uh, the what the plants do is the plants actually filter the fish pee and poop and put it back into the water. So that's the simplified version. We're gonna talk about in a little while the more complex version and how this system and why this system really works. It's actually, a, there's one big linchpin that many people may not be aware about in an aquaponic system that we'll cover in just a little bit. So next we're gonna show you guys some of the different edibles that you can grow in an aquaponic system to feed you and your family. All right, so in this system, they got a couple cool things. First, soybeans. Yes, you can grow soybeans in an aquaponic system. They got some little kales right there. In addition, some mizuna, one of my favorite leafy greens, especially to grow in the winter time. Uh, also, the lettuces. Of course, the lettuces will do well in an aquaponic system, but they can't be in good in full sun. They like it a little bit shady. Uh, let's see here. In addition, they got some of my favorite. This is the shiso or also known as perilla, and this is the purple shiso. I grow this in my garden every year, and evidently it'll do well under aquaponics. In the cinder right here, check it out. This basically acts like a biofilter here. And uh, this cinder actually, unlike other medias that can be used for the aquaponics, have a lot of surface area, because they're literally like little sponges. In addition, it looks like they got a little tomato over there and a whole bunch of uh, chives growing in this bed. So in this aquaponics 
system here. They got a whole bunch of strawberries that are current, currently in the greenery or leafing stage. They're seasonal, so they're not producing berries at this time. In addition, they have a nice uh, large eggplant that's been there a while. And also they're growing uh, lilikoi or passion fruit that's kind of growing out of the aquaponic system over and over and over and up the chain link fence. So I think it'd be great one day when they have all this filled in with lilikoi or passion fruit with hanging fruits to eat and also showing the massiveness of the plant after it's been grown a while in the aquaponics system. Other plants that can be grown in aquaponics are something like this, the basil. Looks like it's doing quite well. They also have some uh, parsley here. And besides the parsley, they got uh, the red Russian kale, one of my favorite varieties of kales right here. In addition, they got the green Malbar spinach. So I, I like the purple Malbar spinach, but they got the green Malbar spinach that was planted maybe about a month ago. It's doing really excellent. This is definitely one of my picks for what I would grow in the aquaponic system because the Malbar spinach is what's called a perennial edible vegetable. You know, some vegetables and some plants actually go through their life cycle, like the lettuce or like the kales. But with this guy, this will continue to grow in and keep putting on food for you so you can eat day after day, year after year, without having to, you know, continually replant like you do with the lettuce. Over next door here, we got uh, things like the more basil. And look at this. This basil has been growing here a while, and this basil straight up has like woody stems on it. It's quite old. Uh, doing quite well, although it looks like it does have some scale on there that they may want to do something with. Um, but doing quite well and uh, nice and tall there. In addition, they got the callow or the taro here, which is also grown in the uh, aquaponic system. In addition, they got a few beets over there and some rosemary. And oh, one of my favorite things to grow in Hawaii for sure right, is this guy right here. This is the okra. Look at those little babies, man. Fresh okra. Okra is absolutely delicious, and I love eating them, especially when they're young babies. So over to this bed, a few more things they are growing. Uh, things like celery right here. Definitely looking really nice and vibrant here. Also, they got this plant. Look at this guy. I mean, this guy is a nice woody stalk, really thick. It's going to seed, and these seeds are actually high in omega-3 fatty acids, as are the leafy greens that you can eat. This is also the shiso or perilla. This is the green variety. Definitely would encourage you guys to grow the shiso green and the purple, as well as basil as like an herb bed. But also, don't forget to grow your leafy greens. So here's some uh, some collard greens here. I would probably choose the uh, Georgia Southern collards here in Hawaii if I was growing them. And uh, let's see here. Oh, here's a nice large parsley plant. Looks super delicious. Looks like it's growing quite well. So you guys just saw some of the different leafy greens and edibles that you can grow in an aquaponic system and i always want to encourage you guys to you know try and grow different things and experiment because that's what this is all about to see what you could get away with of course some plants are going to do better than others and of course that depends on you know how big your system is how well it's draining or not draining which we'll actually we'll talk about in a little bit um, also, how much sun you're getting or how much sun you're not getting. Very important factors to consider when selecting uh, the different vegetables and herbs to grow in your system. Now, besides just the leafy greens, and you guys know that I'm all about my leafy greens, my show's called Growing Your Greens, and I want to encourage you guys to eat like two pounds of leafy greens a day. You know, they are one of the healthiest foods on the planet, the most nutrition with the least amount of calories. As you guys know, you know, standard American food, fast food, junk food is very high in calories with low nutrition. The greens are very high in nutrition. Another thing that's actually very good in nutrition uh, for the calories specifically and for the protein are the fish here. So whether you want to grow your fish and eat them or whether you want to have them as pets, you can definitely do that in the aquaponic system in a, just about 10 months uh, on average, and it depends on the size of your tank and how much you're feeding them and whatnot. Uh, your fish, the tilapia here, will grow into full size so that you can catch them and eat them. I think for fun, we're gonna go ahead and Go fishing, see if I can catch a fish here. I think you gotta be pretty quick if you get one of these suckers. Not that quick. All right, try number two, let's see if we can do it. I got a strategy this time, I'm gonna quarter him against the wall. <laughs> All right, check it out, I caught a fish. But I'm gonna be nice, fish belong in the water, we're gonna let him go. I mean, I think if I have the, uh, Aquaponics here, I mostly grow the fish for my pets, you know, instead of eating them. I got enough greens to get enough protein, a lot of other nutrients in my garden besides the fish personally. 
All right, so now that you guys saw what you potentially could grow, the plants and the fish, we're gonna kind of dive more in and explain how exactly an aquaponic system works and you know the different methods of growing. They have two different kind of setups here. They have like basically a system that has just like a basically flood and drain. It kind of floods it and then it drains it. And they basically just have a system where they're constantly feeding it water. And the system that you choose to have is gonna be dependent on the plants you're growing. So for example, some crops can be grown in a system where it's, the roots are constantly in water, such as the lettuce or such as watercress. Whereas most plants are not gonna like that level of water and have the roots wet all the time. They need to get proper aeration. So there needs to be like a, a flood and drain system where the roots aren't constantly staying wet. So now we're gonna go ahead and show you guys both those different systems and how they do it here at the aquaponics place. So this is the first system we're gonna share with you guys. And this is the easiest system to make. If you think of like your bathtub, right? If you fill up your bathtub with water and then it gets too high, it has that overfill valve, right? So you can never overflow your bathtub and it won't like leak on your bathroom floor. Well, this system, growing the lettuce, you know, in constant water, it works pretty much the same way. So what, what many systems use is they may use like a, some kind of raft system and they generally put this on like some kind of styrofoam, but they choose not to use the styrofoam here because those styrofoam beads will break off, get into the water, contaminate your system. So they actually have a nice piece of uh, plastic here. And uh, let's go ahead and lift this guy up. So what's happening here is that water is getting pumped in over on this side. And if you look on the back side, I don't know if you could see that there, but there's basically like that overfill drain on your um, bathtub that's sucking the water in. So the water never overflows, but always stays a constant height. Uh, the water is kind of being a little bit aerated just due to the flow of the water in and out. And you can see in these little net pots they have here, uh, these little uh, lettuces are growing little root hairs out and the, in these net pots the plants are just set in the cinder and that's actually just to hold the soil. And also another reason that we'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, these lettuces will grow really well like this. Another thing that will grow well like this also is the, uh, the watercress that likes to have its roots wet. So now we're going to show you the second kind of system they have here. This is a system that actually uh, uh, drains out the water and actually drains it fairly fast so that the uh, roots are not staying wet because most plants do not like their roots wet. They will succumb to root rot, possibly other diseases if you do that and that's all made possible with this guy right here. It's actually called a bell siphon and how this works is very simple. We're going to go ahead and give you guys a close-up to show you exactly how this works. Alright, so how this system works is we got a grow bed with all the little cinders in here and then they got this little um, kind of mesh thing that does not allow the cinders to go in and then they have their overflow tube much like the other overflow tube in the lettuce bed. So when the water level that's getting pumped into this bed gets high enough, which it's almost there now, what's going to happen is the water level is going up and if we look, pull this, these rocks back here, you can see the water level right here is getting higher and higher and higher. And if uh, we just let it get this high and go into the overflow tube, which is almost going to reach in a minute, it's always going to stay at that level. Now this is what happens exactly in the lettuce bed. The water level always stays at a certain level. And it's almost overflowing now. And it's just about overflowing now. So check it out. You can see the water running over the top um, into the tube there, which then returns the water to the, uh, the fish tank down below. And, uh, and now you have the water always at this constant level. So what this guy does, which is the uh, bell siphon valve, it basically creates a vacuum or a suction uh, to pull the water faster than it would just normally drain out. So for example, the water's draining out here, but it's never gonna go below this exact level that you're seeing. Now this is the standard uh, bell siphon that they offer here. Just looks like that. It's basically some PVC with a cap on the top and they put some little holes on the bottom, you know, in a nice shape. But actually they have a cool one which is for display purposes only, which actually has a clear top on it. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera, but what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and put this guy over the drain tube. And once again, it has cutouts on the bottom. We're going to put that over the top. And I don't know if you guys could look in there, but what's happening is this is creating a massive suction. And look at this water draining out very quickly, right? This water is draining out very quickly, so now the roots are not sitting in a constant water supply so that they will not get the root rot. And it's this special siphon that siphons the water out until it's all siphoned out 
and then basically it'll slowly fill up again until it's full when it gets full again then it siphons all the water out fast again so this way you're getting a, basically a, a drain and flow without any additional um, appliances or electricity or anything it's all happening on suction this is definitely an ingenious way to uh, make this happen and then it's just kind of cool to look at the uh, the water as it's working in there and see like if it's sucking or if it's filling or if there's air bubbles or it's sucking air or what man definitely so cool let's go ahead and fill this guy back up so this can continue to work uh, how it should so you guys just learn what you can grow then you learn how to do it or the two ways you can accomplish this next I want to get in more to the nitty-gritty the bare bones of how the aquaponic system works it's actually fairly simple but yet complex on some level so pay attention to this part it's probably the most important part of this video in my opinion so as you guys know like what happens is the, you feed the fish the fish poop they make the poop it's then pumped up through and then uh, put into the top here so that it can fil filter down and there's a few components to this system number one is they got a very simple screen here so this screen catches all the solid waste you know because we don't want that solid waste going into the gravel bed kind of get all funky and stuff like that right you can then take the solid waste, and this is solid fish poo. Ugh! Actually, just kidding, doesn't stink. But uh, this is solid fish poo. You could wash this out. I'd probably put it in your garden and use it as a fertilizer. So this is going to catch all that stuff. Now, the non-solids then are going into the cinder bed. And what happens is the plants just don't absorb those uh, you know, nutrients directly. There's a middleman involved. You know, When buying things, I like to cut out the middleman whenever possible. But in this system, I'm afraid you cannot cut out the middleman or the system will not work and it'll crash. So the thing that you'll need to know for this system to work is, and the middleman, what they are are in this bottle here to jumpstart the system. Now the, the middleman will occur naturally, uh, but by jumpstarting the system, you're guaranteed a system that's gonna work more effectively and work right the first time. This is actually simply called the organic digester. So this product reduces the ammonia, phosphate, nitrites, and nitrates actually in there. And they do this by a very special way, using beneficial microbes, so bacteria and enzymes will break down the bad stuff in the fish poop and make it bioavailable for the plants to absorb. So without this critical component that will also occur naturally if you don't want to add it like this, uh, you know, your aquaponic system can work properly and flourish. Uh, the other thing that's very important is the medium. So they got the cinder here, and you know, the cinder, if you look at that closely, kind of looks like a sponge. There's all different cracks and crevices. So this gives the bacteria and the microbes a place to live in this system so that they can flourish and break down the solids from the fish to make it plant absorbable. So yeah. As you guys know that have been watching me for a while, I'm really into the microbes and beneficial fungi and bacteria, and that is truly what makes the aquaponics possible. But if you're also a home gardener in the ground, it also makes a standard garden in your ground possible and will thrive as well. So now that you guys learned how this system works, let's talk about the inputs required to grow the fish and all your plants. Basically, what you need to do is you need to feed the fish so that they can create their uh, biosolids or their poop to feed your plants. Plus, you need to have the bacteria. So all these things are pretty much a one-time investment. Once you've got all those guys growing, going, you're only going to need to buy about three additional things to keep your system going. Number one, you're going to need the fish food, of course. So, you know, the fish pellets. There may be $33 for about 40 pounds of food at this time in bulk, and I always encourage you guys to buy it in bulk for the uh, best price. And uh, you're literally just gonna take some and you're gonna feed the fish. We're gonna throw a little bit of it out there and check it out, they're eating back there. But uh, you know, so the fish foods, all you're gonna need to keep the fish happy so that they create their poop and their pee because they are living in water, so you're not gonna need to provide that. But the few other things you will need are number one, you're gonna need what's in this little bag here. And uh, what's in this bag is some special stuff. And let's go ahead and put the bag back in there for you guys. But what's in the bag is this stuff right here. This is actually oyster shell. So it's often used oyster shell for the calcium for gardening. But what this is, this is a pH balancer. So you could use the oyster shells, which acts as a pH balancer that the fish have the right, you know, uh, pH to live in properly. Another thing you may need, depending on where you live, are heaters. The tilapia like to grow 
and live in the temperature that Hawaii is naturally. So you do not need any additional heating in Hawaii, but other places in the country you may need to actually use heaters to keep your water warm enough or your fish are not going to do well, they're not going to grow fast, and they're not going to make it at all. Another thing you will probably need here and what they recommend at this aquaponics place is the uh, iron chelate. So the iron chelate helps keep your foliage green. It's a nutrient that is not provided by the fish food that will uh, encourage and ensure your plants are healthy. Now the other thing I personally would experiment with that they're not yet doing here and hopefully one day they will is the rock dust minerals. I would experiment with the aquaponics and adding rock dust minerals which will add 70 plus different trace minerals into the water which will also give nutrition and provide nutrition for your fish but also more importantly for the plants you know and, and for them and so uh, the plants and the fish that have more minerals are going to be healthier when they're more healthy they're going to grow bigger grow larger they're also going to be more, more bug and disease resistant uh, in the case of the plants and probably disease resistant and have a stronger immune system in the case of the fish so i don't know exactly how much of that stuff to add uh, but it can be done because I have heard about people doing it before and I would highly encourage you guys to look into that and add some rock dust even in small amounts to add some of those trace minerals uh, back into your system so that you can grow some of the most nutritious food ever. So now that you guys know how this system works we're going to explain the anatomy of the system or the parts that you need to do it and you know here at the aquaponics place they'll supply you with everything you need including the plants and the fish and the containers and the pumps and everything to do that and as you guys can see behind me there's a standard system behind me now the system prices can range in a couple hundred dollars to a thousand or more dollars depending on how large you want your system of course I would always encourage you guys to buy the biggest system as possible because the biggest system that you can buy will produce more fish and more greens for you to eat faster just in case you need to eat out of your garden exclusively and not the grocery store so it's really simple how these systems work. You got two uh, big uh, tanks. You got the bottom tank, which is where the fish live. And then you basically got some uh, concrete blocks that they stack up to make like legs, like a table. Then they have basically a two by four wooden frame that supports the grow bed up top. They have the bed up top, they fill it with a cinder and you plant your plants. I mean, really, aquaponics is really that simple. Now whether you buy a constructed setup like this, which is all looking nice and professional, or whether you get a standard what's called an IBC tote on Craigslist for $100, $200 depending on where you live, and cut it down, it's really that easy to do an aquaponic system. Even if you're renting, have a condo, or you know don't have land or in-ground space, an aquaponic system is an excellent uh, way to use some of the extra space that you have. And you don't necessarily need a nice full sun spot. If you wanna grow tomatoes, yes, you will need a nice full sun spot. But even in the shade here in Hawaii, something like the lettuce and the herbs are gonna do quite well so that you can start providing food for you and your family instead of being dependent on the grocery store. So did I tell you that the aquaponics place will sell you everything you need, including your kit, your fish, and yes, even your plants. They got starter plants here for sale. And what I'm gonna show you guys next, actually how they start their starter plants actually in an aquaponics system. This is actually unique because I've never seen this being done anywhere I visited with all the different aquaponics systems I've ever seen. I've ne never seen anybody do it like this. So it's really cool. So pay attention to this uh, section if you're growing in aquaponics and you want to start your own plants from seed. Aquaponics makes it really easy. All right, so this is how they start their seeds in the aquaponics system. Really cool. So they don't have to you know, use any space, use any kind of soil. What they got is they got a standard seed flat here, you know, standard square flat. And what they've done is they filled it with rockwell, which is a poplar hydroponics growing medium that they also do sell here and in the rock wheel they basically just put the seeds in the little holes and because this is a you know flood and drain table the you know this gets wet and then it drains out so it's not constantly sitting in water which then you could get you know uh, seed rot but in this way this will just get enough water so that the little seeds can germinate into little baby plants once they germinate get a little bit big then they're going to transplant them into little individual containers that are next door. So let me go ahead and show you guys those next. So once they got the little baby plant started uh, from seeds, or actually you could do cuttings like this, you're gonna basically uh, put plants in the little containers here, right? Check it out, little containers. And these containers, once again, have the holes in the bottom, and it's just grown in the uh, cinder there. And then you just basically bury this down in the aquaponics bed here, 
just deep enough so that it gets enough water. Then the plants will get fed and once again, they got that uh, bell siphon valve here that's uh, flooding and draining this. So like the roots aren't staying constantly drenched in water. It's getting enough water. And this is literally an automatic watering system for all the baby starts. This is super ingenious. So it looks like they got here, they got watercress. Probably my top pick for growing in an aquaponic system. Watercress is one of the most nutrient dense vegetables on the planet. In addition, they got the kale, another yet nutrient dense vegetable I believe you guys should be eating at least several times a week. They got the shiso, I love the shiso, especially the purple one, you guys can't see that. Oh, there it is. And they got a green shiso, they got the chives, they even got some corn growing under the aquaponics. Now probably my favorite crop to grow if I was here in Hawaii, I grow the water spinach or the ung choy. It's actually uh, as classified as from the USDA as an invasive noxious weed, so you're probably not or supposed to grow it anywhere else in the United States because it could get in the waterway and all this kind of stuff. But you can grow it here in Hawaii and it'll grow fabulously under an aquaponic system like this and you can literally just take cuttings and replant it. You'll have a whole mass of food that'll continue to grow day after day, year after year. And the great thing about the Ung Choi is that it has a nice mild flavor. It's not strong or bitter, you know, like kale. Some people might not like. And it grows real simple and real easy. I'm all about like sharing with you guys the best of what I know to make gardening and make growing food at home really easy. So hopefully after watching this episode, you now know what aquaponics is, what you could grow, how to grow it, and why it works. I think these are very important fundamental pieces of knowledge that everybody should know how to grow their own food in this day and age. Whether you live in Hawaii and the ship might stop coming in or whether you just wanna have a backup plan in, in case the trucks stop running and there's financial collapse, or whether you just wanna eat the healthiest food possible. Uh, based on the current agriculture system, in my opinion, they're not growing the healthiest food possible. To do that, you must do it yourself at home. Pick it and eat it fresh for higher levels of nutrition. Plus, you could add things in like the trace minerals that are not in foods of today. If you are here on Oahu and interested in getting your own aquaponics system, I would highly recommend the Aquaponics Place, and you could check them out and learn more about them at theaquaponicsplace.com. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this episode uh, coming at you from Oahu, Hawaii. Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep on growing.